Okay, hello, my friends. Uh, I have four big stories for you today, and we're going to start with this. Prime Minister Fico of Slovakia was meeting with the Prime Minister of Ukraine today, and uh, it didn't go as well as maybe either side was hoping. Prime Minister Fico said yesterday, I speak frankly, we are cold about the issue of Ukraine's membership in NATO, but we support you 100% regarding the EU. Your membership will be important and valuable to us. So he's, why is he saying, taking this stance on NATO? I think I understand. I could be wrong and I could be like, correct me if I am. But as I'm reading about this, I'm seeing things like this. This is in Euro News. I know the print is small. Please forgive me. I will direct the lawmakers under my control as chairman of the ruling Smur party never to agree to Ukraine joining NATO, Fito told the broadcaster uh, in an interview on Sunday. Ukraine's accession to NATO would be a good basis for a third world war, added Fito, who has been a vocal critic of the West's military and financial support to Ukraine since Russia launched its all-out invasion in 2022. Okay, so that's exactly backwards. The way to avoid nuclear war is to stop Putin from continuing to do what he's doing, but okay, that's what he said. There is a military conflict in a neighboring country where Slavs are killing each other, and Europe is significantly supporting this killing, which I just don't understand, he said on Sunday. Well, no, it's Slavs, that's Russians, killing Ukrainians, and he doesn't understand why Europe is supporting the right of the victim to fight back? Like, let's think through this. Fito said the war cannot be resolved militarily. That's a standard Russia propaganda talking point kind of line. During his election campaign, he insisted that not a single round of ammunition would be sent to Ukraine. Now, millions have been sent to Ukraine, but that, that's the kind of real estate he's trying to take, mental real estate in our minds of who he is and what he's about. Fito has repeatedly called for diplomatic solutions, stating in the interview on Sunday that everyone thinks that th though Ukraine, through Ukraine we will bring the Russians to their knees, but this problem cannot be solved militarily. So he's trying to outdo Orban, and uh, it's not going well. But so there's a reason, I think, for this. And here, Slovak PM vows to block Ukraine's NATO membership, calls to restore ties with Russia. So one is the business deals with Russia on the other side. But the other was this. The European Union Union needs Russia, and Russia needs the European Union. Friendly relations with Ukraine will also be very important for us, he was quoted as saying. But that also was tied to friendly relations related to mm, Russian oil and gas, which there's a pipeline that's being shut off, and that's the problem here right now in the near term. Kyiv will not extend gas transit deal, Ukraine tells Slovakia. Ukraine will not extend its gas transit agreement with Russia after it expires at the end of 2024. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis, uh, well, he's, so this is what's going on here. He's I think Fito is trying to stiff arm the Ukrainians into, you know, keep this pipeline deal going and maybe we'll, you'll have some better terms. Ukraine's strategic goal is to deprive the Kremlin of profits from the sale of hydrocarbons, which the aggressor uses to finance the war. Slovakia, a member of NATO and the EU, which shares a border with Ukraine, opposes Kyiv's ascension to NATO, but has a strong interest in maintaining the transit of oil and gas from Russia to the West through Ukraine. Slovak state-owned gas buyer SPP said this month it was continuing negotiations to secure an extension of gas transit through Ukraine after Kyiv's contract with Russian supplier Gazprom expires at the end of the year. So I think that's really what's driving FICO here, or FITSO here, and that's big story number one. Big story number two, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I want you to hear, this is the Senate Intelligence Committee member, Mark Kelly. He was a potential for a vice presidential pick on the Democrat side. He warns of a huge misinformation campaign by foreign actors. After hearing from the FBI, the DNI, the NSA, Kelly estimates 20 to 30 percent of political content and comments on social media are generated by Russia, Iran, and China. Let's listen we need to this. To do a better job getting the message out to the American people that there is a, a huge amount of misinformation. Uh, if you're looking at stuff on Twitter, on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, and it's political in nature, and you might might think that that person responding to that political article or who made that meme up is an American, it could be it could look like a U.S. service member. 
there is a very reasonable chance, I would put it in the 20 to 30% range, that the content you are seeing, the comments you are seeing, uh, are coming from one of those three countries, mm -hmm. Russia, Iran, China. Uh, we had a hearing recently uh, yeah. with the uh, FBI director, the DNI, and uh, the head of the National Security Agency, and we, we talked about this, and we talked about getting the word out. And it's up to us, so thank you for asking me the question, because it's up to us, the people who serve in Congress and, and the White House, to get the information out there that there is a tremendous amount of misinformation. In this so that, that, that amount of time that you spend arguing with people on Facebook or, or Twitter or whatever, you might be arguing with a troll or a bot. So you might want to spend your time a little differently. Okay, third big story. Today is October 7th. One year ago today, Israel was brutally attacked. UN-funded T massacred Jews. Next day, hundreds of thousands celebrated this attack openly in the streets of European cities and in social media. For months after, millions of Western citizens, including top intellectuals, pledged their support for those T, which is absolutely bizarre. Again, here's Senator Cruz, stalwart Republican, one a year ago, Hamas committed one of the worst one-day mass murders of Jews since the Holocaust. In the face of this evil, Israel rose to defend itself. I'm in awe of their spirit. The U.S. should stand unequivocally with Israel as it eradicates genocidal tea. Here is Kamala Harris. I will never forget the horror of October 7, 2023, when Hamas T brutally attacked Israel. And there's her statement. On this day, now this is uh, an article just giving you a little bit more of what was going on. On this day, exactly one year ago, the T group Hamas invaded Israel, carried out a massacre at a music festival. In the Hamas attack on Israel, approximately 1,200 Israeli civilians and foreigners were killed and more than 250 people were taken hostage. So far, 154 people, include over, including over 30 bodies, have been returned. 97 remain in captivity. That includes Americans. The attack was accompanied by a barbaric T brutality and numerous, well, I'm not even going to talk about what is being said here because it's just, it's brutal. And I'm not showing you the video either. Uh, you see folks like uh, Boris Johnson talking about, hey, we have to remember this and stand with Israel. And on the other side, Keir Starmer and his statement, standing with Israel. And I want you to get something in your head because people, I, I understand the sympathy for Gaza because you think maybe Israel's picking on Gaza and Gaza is smaller than Israel. But this is what the, the real picture looks like. There's 22 Arab member countries. There's only one Jewish state. There's 481 million in, in Arab League population. There's 7.2 million Jews in Israel. There are uh, square miles of land, 5 million uh, square miles of land in the Arab states, and this tiny 0 0.00855 million square miles of land. It's it's like the size of, I don't know, like New Jersey or Delaware or something like that. It's tiny. That's the size of what the Israeli occupation is. And post-Holocaust, I think they deserve to have their state. Now, you can disagree and put that in the comments below, but be respectful to everyone around you. Okay, even in Seoul, South Korea, there are people that are showing their support for Israel today. Um, and again, this is this is the map. Only in Israel can only Israel can be attacked by T armies on seven fronts and be labeled by the UN as the aggressor. And it's not just that. It's also uh, Russia, Russia, who is feeding Iran, Russia, who is feeding Syria, which is feeding Hezbollah. I mean, Russia's tied to this as well. And I make a clear, compelling case. Greg Terry has made a case about this. It, it's there. OK, but Jackson Hinkle is keeping it classy. Happy Palestine Day, I guess he's, he's putting here. And then down here, Israel invaded Gaza under the premise of freeing Israeli hostages. I'm confused. Are there Israeli hostages in Lebanon now, too? No, Lebanon, the Hezbollah in Lebanon were trying to kill Jews. And so they're fighting back. That's the story. OK, let's switch gears. Happy birthday, Mr. President. This is RT showing in China. OK, happy birthday, Mr. President, written in the sky in China on Putin's birthday. You don't think these guys are tied together? They certainly are. And then 
uh, Ukraine was giving them a gift of successfully hacking a number of Russian TV channels, including Russia 1 and Russian 24. And this was in the interruption breaking into a regular network TV programming today in Russian-occupied Crimea, Putin with a special birthday message. He said this, Dear residents of Crimea and new territories, Today I am marking my last birthday as your leader. I know you all see how the situation is changing. Ukraine's armed forces continue to deliver precise strikes, destroying Russian troops. And this process will only intensify. My government can no longer ensure security and stability. I'm appealing to you. I urge you don't resist change. The Ukrainian army is reclaiming its land. You can aid this process by providing crucial intel to the ZSU, hoping to swiftly end combat and liberate your areas from occupation. Okay, now obviously he didn't say this. This was uh, them hijacking the airwaves and putting that up, but still, like, that's what's happening. Okay, finally, Darth Putin, the parody site. Ukraine lit some birthday candles for me in Crimea. Well, that was nice of them. This is actually an oil refinery, and we talked about it earlier today. All right, that's all that I have, my friends. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the coffees, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.